Sniper in the hand of Glacier. So still 3v3, 44 seconds left on the clock. United, they're going to have to end up committing to this B bomb site because if they decide they want to rotate out now with this much time on the clock, they're just going to be putting more pressure on themselves. Yeah, I think Glacier's trying to work on a pick there, hold, hold that top angle. Pristini's going to need to either get this kill or scare him away, which he does just that. If they get this bomb down, they could have a, a flawless setup here in the B bomb site. Especially with Glacier with that snipe in hand. On streaks. All right, and you're going to have two on the flank. Glacier's going to see one. Uh oh. Oh! <laughs> That's a bad man. <laughs> man advantage for E United, but Priest has something for him. 2v2 situation. RCs gets one. They know where the last guy is, I believe. RCs looking, replays, being patient. Just wants him to peek. He's going to end up getting them. Now, Priester comes in with the cleanup. I don't think uh, Replays realizes how big of a kill that was on Arcees right there. Arcees picks up the glide bomb, but he's one off his uh, artillery strike. Ends up getting taken out there by Replays. I would have liked to see Arcee, you know, stay, stay down there, maybe mm -hmm. put a bullet into him, wait for Clay to clean it up, get that assist. But either way, big round for United. Also picking up a glide bomb that can only be good. And you see, I see number seven is, is Pristini. He's looking to say, hey, you know what? When it comes down to fighting for this mid hill, I want the courtyard spawns for my team so we can get that same killer setup that FaZe had off the first rotation. And they're trying to stay alive. And actually, that kill against Priesta could be very, very huge for him. Still one point left on that last hill. Now the rotation's finally coming through. A United setup, but they was not able to, to acquire those courtyard spawns for the team. So it's still going to be somewhat of the same setup that we saw on the first rotation. Yeah, and uh, this is kind of the same situation we had on that, you know, that first middle hill. If Zuma can get pushed up here and they get a few kills, it's going to be extremely difficult for you to break on through. The last few hills have been on the side of United with the spawns. They haven't backed up for that much time, so this can be a good situation once again for FaZe. All right, let's see if FaZe can do what they get off the first rotation. They get us some time. You got Felony trying to be annoying, but couldn't kill attach on that one. And Free Pristini, he comes through. And dive in. He stays alive there. Place is going to end up having his back, but Priest is still in the mix. Looking to get some shots over the top. E United trying to tie this game up. He's going to end up falling. Yeah, so you see number one, that was going to be replays. He was trying to get on in the back there. Spawns for his team. He was there for about 25 seconds. Could not get any assistance from his teammates because he was doing a good job of cutting them off on that bridge. Gets taken out, and now the spawns are going to be on the side of United. This is going to be their chance to take the lead in this game. And FaZe, they're scurrying. They're panicking. They said, hey, we had such a, we were in such a dominant position to start this one off, and now they find themselves behind. We'll see what they can do. And, and, and what have they been doing wrong compared to when they started off this game till now? Uh, you know, off the roof of this game, Zuma was just in their face making a lot of, you know, push up. He's getting a bunch of kills, a bunch of two pieces, stringing together a lot of kills that was making it difficult for United to get any map positioning on the map. But as the rotation started to come in, FaZe was not playing together. They weren't pushing out the spawns as a unit. And in the end, that's going to end up being terrible for your team when you're trying to work on those spawns. And we see United, they rotated to that second hill the last two times. They get a full setup and they got a 60 on it. So. Tall task for FaZe to come back right now. What I did there was uh, they saw that FaZe had full map control. They were being aggressive, trying to get control of that fire and maybe get a flag out, which they do. They slam out. But while they were doing that, Pristini actually sneaks through to their base, gets the flag out OE, and now they're just trying to, you know, make it a little bit of a stalemate, maybe uh, shave some time off the clock here on the unfavorable side. So I like the way you use playing this. RC's pushing up, trying to get this return. And uh, so the glide bomb did get up, end up uh, being used by FaZe Clan. Picked up a kill, but wasn't much they can do with that one. But the flag is still going to be on the back ends. And so now they're just holding off. Uh, United is going to wait for all their players to spawn up. And then they're going to try to make a unified push to try to get the return on this one. But uh, both teams so far has not found a solution. Yeah. And uh, right now, if you're United, this is a great situation to be in. You know, like I, I keep bringing it up because it is very important. Being on the unfavorable side, being able to shave time off the clock is huge. And you see number eight, that's going to be... Oh, RCC gets taken out. He's trying to work on the return. That could have been a great sneak play out of him. But it's just defense back and forth. Replays picking up a big kill. Might be able to work on this return here. Place, got to go huge. He's going to end up picking up the flag, though, so that does not get returned. Going to take it back as well. He's going to get hit with a stun. He knows that they're going to be hunting for him. He's going to try to dive to the back end. So the flag will be dropped. But so far, it's going to be replays. The closest player to return this one. win? He's going to win that gunfight. Still one more gunfight to win. Oh. And he can't get it versus Pristine. But number four is coming in. It's going to be attached. He's going to shoot him. Looking to dive in for the return. He's going to get it. The flag goes in. And Face Clan is going to end up striking first in the CTF. They had to work for it. You know, they kept killing the flag carrier over there on that side of the map. They were pushed through. Finally, replay spearheads that gets that two piece that kind of opens up the map for them. They get the return. So solid plays out of phase. Trying to work on getting more map control here. Phase to get the big double.
off. You got to win maps. Like, yeah. even if you're playing Optic or, or Rise or any of these LG, EU, these top teams, you have to take maps because we know when that fourth place spot comes around. I've been there before. It happens to all these teams time and time again. Maps can be, they can dictate whether you make it into playoffs or not. So if I'm Unilad, I'm thinking, okay, maybe we're not prepared, like, prepared enough to win this match against this team, but we need to win some maps. So whatever their weakest map is, let's capitalize on it, formulate a game plan, and win it. And that's going to be like, I think that's the de deciding factor of whether they're going to make it into playoffs or not if they win a couple of those lower matches. They don't have much time to change things. It doesn't happen for this squad. You know, he's just the most consistent in my opinion. And I'm looking for him to have a big Anaheim tournament. Yeah, with that double in return, he's going to be uh, halfway to streets. And uh, he's currently playing his life on the back end. And he's over here by train. Does not see the guy in the corner. And uh, he's going to get shot in his back. Pristini is still in enemy territory. He's trying to make the play. Yeah, he's, he's going to be patient. He's going to wait till these guys push forward, get towards the other end of the map, and then he can run it and uh, make that defensive that. play. Oh, you get an extra minute of time here. So Pristini actually makes a really smart play there, kind of hides behind enemy lines, waits until his teammates pick up a kill or two, and he's going to get that flag out. Number three is going to be on the hunt. That is going to be Priesta. Flag's also out on the side of phase. So this could spell trouble for United if they're able to capitalize on this return. Exactly. Or like I said, it could be that it could be that blessing. They can tie this one up 1-1 one, one, going into the half. And the last time we was in a stalemate situation, phase. They were the ones that were able to win it. And now Zuma looking to do it again. Nice he gets shots. one kill. Ooh, but he's gonna die to that nade. But like you said, nice shots. He's gonna get that flag. Very, very weak, but still nobody in the area to clean up. Now, E United is going to be all up in the spawn of FaZe Clan. I don't think he saw him. I don't think he saw him. So Priesta actually does not get eyes on Fellow who goes underground there. They're working on pitcher. E United's going to uh -oh, get this the return. Uh -oh. He got it. He puts it in. And, folks, we got a tie game going into round number two of this CTF. And what an amazing play out of Priestini. You know, yeah. He goes back to the back of the spawn, hides, waits until his teammates pick up a kill here on their flag. Unfortunately, FaZe gets the flag out for the side of E United. But, you know, they work on that return. They get the cap at the last second. That's about as best of an unfavorable side you can have. Sure that FaZe cannot get this set up, and he's able to take down replays, trying to stay alive and be annoying, but he's going to end up falling. And it still looks like FaZe maybe even get a good hold, but as I say that, Pristini, he's looking to be a nuisance in the back lines. His brother's going to end up going down to Zuma. Here comes the Mirage, and they're going to drop it right on top of the hill. Try, to get, try to get FaZe out of it. He's still chucking right left time, but he's going to finally fall on that one. The United looking to make something like, out of this hill. I like what FaZe just did there. You know, they knew there was a couple players in the back, so they did a tight setup around the hill. They waited for the players to engage in gunfights, and they took him out, and they got a decent amount of time there. So that was actually pretty clutch play by FaZe. Rotations are going to be coming in here. They're going to build themselves about a 42-point lead going into this Castle, Castle Road Hill. Okay, so, you know, Castle Road, you're going to see number five. That's going to be Clacy. He's going to already be set up. The brothers, they're going to be end up picking up a double kill. So when, when these players start progressing across this, you know, across this main bridge, if you had a good setup, it's going to be hard to end up breaking that, right, Ed? Oh, yeah, it's, it's extremely difficult. Even if you take out a player, you know, near the hill, he's going to spawn up in the back with another grenade ready to fight right away again. So you almost want to send a player towards Briggs, have him wait a little bit and kind of all attack at the same time. And even then, it's still very difficult. You see the smokes coming in, trying to create a little bit of chaos if you're on the side of FaZe Clan. And their, their pushes are seem, seem to all be failing right now. And that's by the hands of United having such a good setup. Scump and Octane here, gonna fire some shots down. He's get, he get a few hit markers, but damage is gonna run away. The bomb is gonna be down. Is that bomb planted at? Yep, that bomb is planted. There's 30 seconds left on the counter. This is good. this could be a round for Tainted Mines. It's gonna get a little bit yep. scary though. 4v3 retake for Optic. All right, we'll see if they can get in. Nimble, can he find one kill? He's gonna find one, but he gives up his position. He's gonna try to play his life. Scump does find another. Oh, the quick They're on turnaround. the bomb, they're, they're on the defuse. Swifty's gonna have to get this kill. He takes him out, he gets a glide bomb. He sees one more, oh. he take, almost gets him. They're gonna get the defuse. He does pick up that glide bomb though. I would have loved to see that clutch. That would have been absolutely insane on the side of Swifty. Only gonna pick up that glide bomb defuse coming in for Optic Gaming. Unilad against Echo Fox. This one is still going on. It could go all the way to a game five as well. Echo Fox has a very, very narrow lead just by the just by a little bit, but Unilad does have the lead in the series. If they close it out here, they will close out the entire thing. And look at Facento sitting at 34 and, 34 and 20. He switched over to that main AR role because, as we saw previously, Aqua was kind of struggling uh, running that main AR in the Pro League. We get Facento here running a main AR. He's 34 and 20. That's something we don't usually see out of him, so that's crazy on the side of Aqua Fox. And he's also the type of player that the earlier he gets hot, the earlier he gets... This is what Echo Fox need to get back in this. They need to stream together some kills here and get some map control. All right, so he's going to be patient in his control room. This is going to be uh, the base of Rent Reserve, but Hunted. they're going to find him. Now number six is going to be through. Joe. Got Joe got through. He's in the spawn. He's going to find one. one more. 
Actually, that's gonna be just one. Kill oh. three, three. Oh, he got he it. He just got away. That player, oh. number three, who was that? Facetto doesn't turn around. He doesn't oh. kill Joe. Saints is gonna take him out. This is a one-on-one -on -one right here. Raiden. He's gonna oh, take out scene. Saints. Raiden has the flag. He's gonna bring this one home. He has a player to cut off the rest of the players on Echo Fox. Oh Joe. my God, Joe, you sneaky Joe. beaver! Just this entire series has been making plays, and Red Reserve is gonna be up two to one. Now Scraps is going to be holding his position over here towards the gun side, defending his base. They're going to try to clear out Tim. Joe and Zero are going to be picking up kills of their own. So man advantage in favor of Red Reserve. They're going to find another one. Four this dead. is going to allow them to push out their base. The pressure is on Echo Fox. Less than a minute remaining in this one, Ant. Oh my god, what a play out of Joe. Sneaks through bottom green, shoots that player in the back, takes the perfect route to where nobody on Echo Fox could kill him, brings it home, and this is Echo Fox's final stand. Number two is going to be Saints. He has to win this gunfight and get to the Echo Fox base. Phase to break out of. Places, he, he calls in for help as well, too. And now, the, you just got E United being patient. And yeah, of course, right? You're on the defensive Don't side. Move. You got a guy top rules. You got a guy in you. You got two stacked on cabin. Phase pushing through mid map. He should be able to get some easy kills for E United. And now it's a 2v2. RCD knows where attach is. He's looking for this last shot. Here comes help from Priest. The RCD knows he's getting pushed. Trying to put himself in a better position. Clayster with a quick rotation. In. Getting caught reloading. Oh. Oh, 1v1? 1v1 oh one situation, folks. Can RCDs get it and send this to a round 11? Bomb being planted, and RCDs takes him out. We I knew it was going to happen. We called it. What a round. We, you know what happened there was Zuma gets straight up the middle of the map. No fear. He's going to make that player in you back down. But he goes, I don't want any any problem with this guy. I'm going to go straight through mid. I'm going to kill one Cabinelli. Makes it chaotic. What do you think is going on on the side of Rise? I mean, right there, you just have John and Slack going absolutely off. And then Gunless has a performance that we don't usually see. I think I looked at the scoreboard. He was like 17 and 27 at one point. And he's kind of the lead slayer on that team at times. So if Gunless is going to play like that, either Looney or TJ are going to have to step it up for them to be able to contend with these top teams. I mean, when you look at Rise, you just expect Gunless to fry absolutely. It's in favor of United. So... They're watching his backhand. They know that they're probably going to peak. Felony end up seeing him. Yeah, what can be scary here on the side of phase is if you're going to push to be like that, you kind of need to commit to your push. Yeah. Because even if you get taken out by an aid, you need to go in and try to get those trades because you're going to get in a situation here where the other team knows exactly where you are, you're pinned, and they have bomb site control. So phase are going to need to pull off a miracle to win this round, maybe get a pick here near red. But it's definitely going to be extremely difficult when you don't commit to that B push. Also, at the same time, when you know your team has a man advantage, also you're, you're playing defense, your confidence is going to go through the roof. Exactly. E United, a lot of veteran players, they know that, hey, we're not going to make any type of reckless moves whatsoever. And uh, they're going to lose felony, though, but they still have the man advantage 3v2 in favor of them. And this bomb is going to be closer towards the A bomb site. It's actually going to be down mid-map. And E United is well aware of where that bomb is. Oh, this oh. could be big. Can he finish off the kill? Can't just yet. Trying to peek it. Could it he almost was set up for a double. Double. Replay is going to push in and see if he can get anything. Clean up place there. And nope, not able to. Actually, he does, but still going to get pinched in the end. Yeah, that got a bit scary there for United. You know, they kind of lined up there in that middle street. Clay had an angle. He knew exactly where they were coming from, and his teammate came to help him. Although, attached going to clean up the kills. That would have been crazy if he got it, that. It really would have been. Coming over the top soon, but Felony is going to just keep holding down, keep going forward. He's going to manage to get one. Looking for a second. Going to connect oh with those shots. Oh, but the nade comes through. Man advantage phase plan. And he united still in this bomb site. Place they're looking to even the odds. He's gonna be patient. Yeah, and hey, when you're in this bomb site and it's a 2v3, you can always make stuff happen. It's such a power position to be here in the bomb site because they have to peak those single lanes. You see Clay picking up the quick count replays. Not sure what FaZe's plan was there. You kind of see teams when they're trying to rebreak it, they push all together at the same exact time. Replays kind of jumping the gun there, going a little bit early. 2v2 situation, advantage on the side of United. Yeah, and Clay is gonna just hold off in this position, you know? Uh, the guy can't shoot him from that, that opposite opening, so he's just going to watch up top, but both with the bomb planted, they're just going to back out and put themselves in a more advantageous position. They're going to find out exactly where Attach is as well, and so he's going to say, hey, we know where Attach is, trying to put some pressure on the flank. Oh, Attach is going to stay aggressive, too. He knows he got help Ooh, coming. annoying. Oh. Yeah, Attach is trying to be a nuisance here behind this truck by a little bit of time for Zuma. Zuma's going to push on up. Arceus gets away. He's working on more streaks as well. This can be a huge round on the side of RCD. He's currently sitting this at 9 one all the confidence in the world. <laughs> this is patience. See, this is where you just waited out. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, right? Just, what time should we go? What should you go check? About, oh, oh, right there. The, there that exact time, 12 seconds. <laughs> nah, he's and he's win. actually going to pick up this kill, I think. Nope, he doesn't want anything. I think he planted it, so if, if the bomb does blow up, he's going to get his streaks. 
There you go. He's gonna, and he gets the kill as well. So that may have him fully streaked out because you said as soon as the bomb blown up, blew the up. Bomb, the bomb didn't blow up. So I think okay, he only so. got his glide bomb. I think he's going to be an assist or maybe one kill off the rest of his streaks. But extremely well played out of United. You saw they planted the bomb to where they didn't have to trap themselves. They can back up towards their, towards that uh, defensive or offensive side and just play their life, which is exactly what they did. Worked out perfectly. So if his timing was, was right...